No, I wasn't dreaming when the Russian hotel staff broke in and tried to steal our AV gear. Sometime in the early 2000s, probably around 2002 or 2003, I was laying in bed asleep. I think it was about four in the morning when the telephone rings. It was Pebbles who booked stagehands and AV techs for a local company back then. And she wanted to know if I was available to work and could make it down to Marco Island by eight o'clock in the morning. Come to find out, there was originally four other people who were scheduled to work this job, but they were driving down there and got pulled over by the police and all four of them ended up in jail for possession of illegal substances. I said sure, so I immediately got up and got ready to leave and drove to Marco Island. I get to Marco and the job was to help with the general session. So it ends up being me, Pebbles, and Pebbles' daughter, who was 15 or 16 years old. We get the general session loaded in and everything set up, and the client asked me if I wanted to stick around and help with the breakout rooms. Of course, I said yes. So he ends up having me help set up the breakout rooms, and then he asked me if I want to stay down there and help float the breakouts the next day. The only problem was he didn't have a hotel room reserved for me because he wasn't planning on having anybody there. He himself, the client, was staying in a different hotel. The venue where the show was at was pretty upscale and the client didn't want to foot that bill so he stayed in a different hotel and he told me that I could stay there in our headquarters room, our storeroom for our gear, which just so happened to be one of the suites that was just down the hall from all of the meeting rooms. Now this was a, a full suite with a kitchenette, a separate bedroom, a living room, and it walked out a sliding glass door out to the pool area where the lazy river was and all the other tiki bars and things like that. So I said, yeah, man, I'll stay there. So he gives me a key card for the door and tells me that the room has been set up as a private room because we have our gear in there. The gear being laptops, projectors, sound equipment. And so only himself and my key card were supposed to have access to open the door. So I hang out the rest of the night, end up back in the suite, sleeping in bed, and whenever I stay in a hotel, I always take a flashlight with me. It's a surefire tactical light, extremely bright, and I set it on the nightstand right next to the bed. So I'm sleeping, and just after 1 a.m., I hear the door open, and the hall light comes on. So I wait a couple seconds, and sure enough, a man shows up in the living room, and he's looking at all of our gear. So I grab my flashlight, and I light him up, and he's instantly like a deer caught in the headlights. He freezes. He starts stammering. his ah, uh, there's not supposed to be anybody in here. And I said, that's right. There isn't supposed to be anybody in here. And as I'm getting out of bed... He's running down the hallway to the door, and just as I turn the corner, I see him open the door and leave, and right outside the door was a laundry hamper, and I can only imagine that the idea was to steal some gear, put it in that laundry hamper, and just walk away. So I end up going back to bed. Morning comes around. The boss shows up. And the first thing he asked is, so how was it staying here last night in this $500 a night suite? And I told him, oh, it was pretty nice except for getting woke up in the middle of the night. And he looks at me kind of puzzled and says, well, what do you mean? And I said, yeah, about one o'clock, some guy walks in. 
He says, no, that couldn't be. It's a private room. Nobody's supposed to have access. Not housekeeping, room service. Nobody's supposed to be able to get in here. He says, well, some guy walked in and I chased him out. And the boss says, are you sure you weren't dreaming? He said, nope, I was not dreaming. So he goes and gets the head of security and the woman comes back. I tell her what I told the boss. And first thing she asks is, well, you were probably dreaming. I said, no, I was not dreaming. A guy came in here and I chased him out. And she asked, well, could you describe him or would you be able to identify him? And I said, I don't know. It was, it was like a Russian looking and sounding guy. You know, he kind of sounded Eastern European, Russian kind of. And she says, well, that doesn't help because practically the entire hotel staff is Russian. She says, let me go and check the logs. I'll be back. She goes back to security and I guess gets on her computer and looks at the logs of every time a key card had been put in the lock. And she came back with a piece of paper, a printout, and she says, yep, sure enough, just after 1 a.m., And she looks at the boss and she says, your key card was used to enter the room. And I told her, well, it wasn't him. And he says, no, I was down at this other hotel. So I don't know what all happened. Probably nothing, really. I mean, she obviously knew at that point that somebody at the front desk or who had access to the key card programming system programmed or cloned our private key card and gave it to one of the hotel staff. So this was like an inside conspiracy to steal gear. I finished the job. We load out. Everything's all good. And I never heard another word about it. And that's the time that the Russians tried to steal our AV gear. On the next episode of Backstage Stories. The security guys were seeing who could do the fastest hot lap around downtown in the Maserati.